Hi again, friends. This is Jeff, your host of Talflator Mouse. We have another awesome custom machine slug brought to us by Tim from Tactical G Code. Over the last year, he has sent us a whole bunch of different designs that he and his viewers have dreamt up for us to shoot. These projectiles are made on a quarter million dollar CNC setup. Now, Tim calls these the bomber slugs because there's a lot of influence from those dime store cap bombs that a lot of kids played with years ago. But of course those cap bombs don't fit a 12 gauge shotgun and they're made out of pot metal so they'd probably break when you shot them. Tim also sent along aluminum nitro cards which is just a fancy word for a, a support disc. It'll help spread the load across the back side of those fins. With a prototype production cost of $220 a piece, it's probably one of the most expensive rounds we've ever shot. Our first target, backed by popular demand, the giant ballistic gel gummy bears. Today we'll be using the P3 Ultimate Shooting Rest. This allows safe, precise shooting without the shooter blocking the camera shots. Okay, got a, got a, a face shot. And it came out here, into there, into there. Yeah, it, it tracks straight through that. Yeah. And even our little glitter last one. And then the it's, it's in the sand. And I don't, it didn't come out, so we've trapped one of them, so that's good. How about shooting the pickles next? Cool. Yep. Okay, what do you got there? Uh, it's a uh, large sweet pickles. How do you know that? I know Korean. Do you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're right, man. You do know and Korean. Nutritional facts, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you do know Korean. That's pretty good. I was amazed how many people do know Korean from the other video. Yeah. A lot of people. It was it was pretty cool. Right All above right. it. Okay, Jacob. That hit. And it <laughs> went through. The P3 shooting stand has adjustable feet on it, so it was easy to make a quick elevation adjustment. The bomber slug did not hit in the center, so there must have been some kind of issue there, but at least it hit on the second shot. With the big box of sand behind each target, we were hoping to capture each one of these expensive slugs. And we did, that's the good news. The bad news is two of the slugs were very damaged and we could not reshoot those. This slug, which went through the can of pickles, is far too damaged to shoot again. Now, this slug, we could not find the fins to. It was completely severed in half. Finally, this one is the one that missed everything and just slammed into the box of sand. This one is in good enough shape, even though it is a little damaged, to shoot again. Okay, let's reuse that. Go ahead and shove it in there. All the way down. Ready to go for another try. Should be good. This time we'll shoot at three jugs of water. Three gallons of water. At least I washed all that nasty pickle juice off. Did it go into the box? Yep. Okay. Oh, it did. Yeah, it Here, did. move it out of the way. I'll, I'll... Right there. Oh, yeah. Once again, we sifted through that box of sand and located this slug. And there doesn't seem to be any more damage inflicted on this slug than before we shot it. I cleaned up the slugs the best I could. This is the one that went through the ballistic gummy bears. This other one is the one that went through the pickle can and carried along with it was a piece of the lid of the can there. It kind of conformed to the dimpled nose of the slug. And this last one is the one we shot twice. There's a little bit of damage around the midsection of it, but for the most part it could be shot again. 
it's pretty amazing for a, a projectile to be this durable that you could actually shoot it more than one time. Okay, let's look at the high speed footage. Here you can see what happened to the tail section. It went off to the right as the nose of it continued on all the way through all the gummy bears and into the box of sand. Now it's a little bit hard to tell in some of these shots, but the slug was kind of flying at a 45 degree angle or so in a nose up configuration. Just in this shot, uh, I'm not really sure why, but at least it was on target and we hit the gummy bears. Okay, this is the shot where it just went right above the can. Um, the neat thing about using that stand is that several people can kind of look at the aim and say, yeah, it looks about right. And it did look very centered. Sometimes the slugs will just fly high um, compared to other slugs, like a deer slug. And of course, this is the shot that hit the can. And um, it could have been a little more centered but we're just happy that he hit it at all. Now I should note that the reason Tim makes these slugs is just out of curiosity and creativity. He comes up with these designs and it's just for fun. He has no plans to sell them or anything like that. It's just uh, it's a way he could show off his machining skills and you know give viewers a chance to kind of chime in and come up with designs that, that he can actually make. Okay, this slug is the one that we shot previously, the one that went through the box of sand, loaded it up, and shot it again. And it was probably one of the best flying ones that, that we shot out of the whole lot. This was probably the best camera shot of the lot. The, the conditions weren't great, but you can see the slug kind of waggling along a little bit, but for the most part, flying very straight and true. I want to thank Tim for making this video possible. Be sure to subscribe to his channel. You'll get to see him make these things. You'll get to see him shoot them first. And he's supposed to have a giveaway, and the, the prize is going to be one of these slugs, one of these expensive $220 slugs. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.